Good morning, God's beloved. Good morning. And happy Mother's Day. Welcome to worship. We're glad you're here. It is a beautiful day out there, and uh, we're, we're getting ready for a big weekend. We're celebrating Mother's today in our house, and, and then we're heading down to Phoenix for Ivy's graduation from college. Very cool stuff. We're glad. Oh, there she is. She's here. I don't know if she was watching me. We're glad you're here. So say hello to somebody and welcome them into worship. If you're watching online, go ahead and share the video and, and let people know you're glad they're here too. Let's worship together, yeah? Um, you know, I, I just, I, you know I love doing this. Come on, clap with me, please. Uh-oh, Lutheran's clapping, watch out. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. Pick it up. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. It's a beautiful day. The wind might be blowing outside, but that's okay. We'll live. We'll live. Wear those masks and keep all the dust out of your, your nose, right? Uh, you know, today we're... See how music brings us together, wakes us up, connects us to one another, makes us into a new assembly. And every Sunday, every time we gather, we are a new assembled people of God, along with all the people of God across the universe. We're here together and let the Holy Spirit flow through this place as we worship today and praise our God and give thanks and, uh, and, and continue to move forward faithfully. And today we remember Julian of Norwich. I mentioned her a couple of weeks ago in, in a sermon, I think. She died around 1416 when she was about 30 years old. Julian, or Juliana, uh, reported visions that she later compiled into a book, Revelations of Divine Love. Now a classic of medieval mysticism. You can read it and check it out. It's a lot of fun. The visions declared that love was the meaning of religious experience provided by Christ, Jesus, who is love, or the purpose of love. Julian of Norwich, we remember her today across the church. So we prepare now our hearts and minds for worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Today we are giving thanks to God for the gift of mothers and the mother-like nurturing that many people show to others in their lives. Isaiah wrote, 
that God is a mother to us, comforting and carrying us in her arms. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you, God says through the prophet. Loving Lord, thank you for your tender care. Isaiah also wrote that God would never forget us. He knows each of us like a mother knows her own children. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. Loving Lord, thank you for your tender care. David wrote that in God's presence, he was quiet and at peace, trusting his mother, God, like a child, safe in loving arms. Psalm 131, but I have still and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother, like a weaned child is my soul within me. Loving Lord, thank you for your tender care. Jesus even spoke of himself as a mother, looking to wrap his arms around us like a mother hen gathers chicks under her wings. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. Loving Lord, thank you for your tender care. Paul writes about his missionary ministry and likens his work to that of a nurse who looks after those in her care. But we were gentle among you, he writes, 1 Thessalonians, like a mother caring for her little children. Loving Lord, thank you for your tender care. Let's sing together as we gather at your table.
God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and in the name of Jesus Christ your sins are forgiven. May Almighty God strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. You may be, yeah, well, let us pray. Amen. Calling God. Transform us as you transform the all. Shape us into children who rejoice in knowing and proclaiming you to the world. Amen. You may be seated. All right, kids, come on down. We've got some kids here. Come on over here. So glad you're here. Uh, let's see. Let's, let's maybe we'll ask Zayden's grandma. Is there a song that you sing to Zayden before he goes to sleep? Oh, I love you. I love you song. Are you gonna sing it for us today? Oh. Okay. Jada, is there a song that you'd like to hear before you go to sleep? Does someone sing to you? Yeah. How about you guys? Does someone sing a song before you go to sleep? No. Well, maybe when you were really little, huh? Well, I want to share a song that my grandmother actually used to sing to me when I was little, many, many years ago. And she would rock me and on the porch swing, and she would sing, Jason is a dear little boy. Jason is a dear little boy. It's still in my head. It's still in my heart. That will never leave me. I will never forget it. Maybe. Maybe someone sings a song like that. Does that sound sound familiar to you, Jacob? Does someone sing that to you? I do? I sing that to you at bedtime, don't I? When you were four, but he's five now. <laughs> Things change, I understand. We're growing together. Music is like that. It gets stuck in our head. At least, is there a favorite song you have that gets stuck in your head and you can't stop singing it sometimes? Why is that, do you think? Because you listen to it a lot and you like it? You like to listen to music too, Jada? Yeah? Do you like to play music? Do you play instruments? Yeah? What do you like to play? Do you like Oh, guitar. Nice. Nice. We can play together sometime, maybe. Electric guitar? How about you, Lise? Yeah, but you always wanted to play what? The drums. Yeah, the drum set's in the garage. It's a work in progress. But music is so powerful to us. JP, do you like to sing songs? <laughs> Blippi, you sing Blippi songs? <laughs> I love Blippi songs. You never get those ones out of your head. <laughs> yeah, I'll pray for you. If you have a Blippi song stuck in your head, I'm, I'm praying for you. <laughs> Lord be with you. Guys, you know, music is so powerful, and I love music. Do you know I love music? Yeah. So when we sing, we come to church, we sing together, and it's powerful stuff. God's words are what we're singing, okay? So when we sing those songs, we're not just singing because we like the tune or it sounds nice. We're singing powerful, powerful words, the word of God, even in our songs. So if you go to church and you go, oh, you know what? Which word of God did we hear today? It wasn't just the one that the pastor read. It wasn't just the one that, that they preached about. But it was the songs we sing. It's in the words we say in confession. It's when we gather at this table. We're saying God's words. And we're singing out God's words. Powerful stuff. And we're going to hear a story today about Paul and Silas singing. And they were in prison. They were locked up. And their songs and their prayers were powerful enough to shake the ground. They're like this. Let's see if we can shake the ground today. Not so much. But you know what? Maybe later on when we get all these people singing with us, you never know what could happen. Maybe the ground will shake. Maybe the walls will move. Maybe the doors will fling open. And everyone will hear our singing and know that we are singing to God and about God and for God and for a world that loves God. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's see. You never know. We have earthquakes here too, don't we? All right, let's pray. God, thank you for music. Thank you for your words that are powerful. May we sing them and know them and never forget them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks for coming to church. I got stickers. We've got some really special music happening today, too. We've got some special singing.
singers that are going to debut for us today, the new generation of the Living Hope singers are here to sing for us today. Are you guys ready for this? This is going to be really special. Are you want a hamburger sticker? <laughs> from Acts chapter 16, beginning at the 16th verse. 
One day, as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, these men are slaves of the Most High God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days. But Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, these men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to him, to, the, to them. Suddenly, there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, do not harm yourself for we are all here. The jailer called for lights and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them, and he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please rise as you're able for the reading of the gospel. troubled with unclean spirits were cured, and all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Blessed are you when people hate you, Jesus said, and when they exclude you and revile you and defame you on account of the Son of Man, rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets, the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Have you ever experienced an earthquake? 
Who's been? Who's felt an earthquake? Was it, was it a serious one? Was it was it heavy? Did it freak you out a little bit? Yeah, we we get them here every now and then. I was sitting in my office one day and I was reading uh, in the Psalms about a great earthquake, and I felt my desk begin to vibrate. I am not joking. This is for real. My desk started to vibrate. I looked out. I thought, oh, there must be a big truck coming by. Nope. And I pulled up in my computer. I pulled up the. Uh, the seismic activity website, and sure enough, there was an earthquake. Just as I was reading that scripture, whoa! The, the first time, though, this is just an aside, I'm just, I'm just spitballing here. The first earthquake I ever felt, I had moved to LA, and I was there like less than a week, and I was at the Beverly Center, which is a big fancy mall, like the fanciest mall there is, and, uh, and the, the walls started going like this, and I thought, that's strange, I don't think they're supposed to do that. And, um, and, of course, everybody starts running and screaming to the underground parking garage. I guess that's, I don't know, that didn't make sense to me, but I was new, so what do I know? But yeah, it was unnerving. It was strange. I said, I don't think the ground's supposed to move this way. I'm not used to this. It was wild, but it was just a little one. Just a little one. Obviously, we know that they can cause serious destruction, too. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father in heaven, and our risen Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I'm not getting tired of that, are you? No. Don't. You know, I, I talked a little bit with the little kids today that, about how powerful music is. It certainly has been powerful in my life. Um, but just the other day, I had a song stuck in my head. Something I had heard on the radio, and, and I didn't know the name of the, the artist, but I had heard this song over and over again. And I thought, who, you know what, who, who sings this song? And I finally got around to pulling up my phone and looking it up to see who it was, and I was devastated. I was devastated to learn it was a new song from Justin Bieber. <laughs> uh, man, it was not intentional. God forgive me. You know I love music, but that was not on my faves playlist. I don't know. Maybe it will be now. I'll be unapologetic. I'm a... I got the Bieber fever. <laughs> I'm a believer. You might, <laughs> this might happen to you. You might find yourself singing a song all day long, even if you don't like the song. It just gets into your head. But I've heard the only solution to this is to go back and listen to that song from the beginning to the end. And then your mind will say, okay, we're done with that one. I, I don't know if that's true. I've heard that though. Ivy has her, uh, we all love music in our house. Ivy has her Depeche Mode record collection. Amen. Amen. Uh, Lily loves new alternative music, and she loves sharing her new favorite artists with me. But she knows music from every decade. It will astound you. She, uh, she loves to listen. Elise is learning Spanish at school, and so she, she sings songs in Spanish and, and rhymes and learning colors and the names of animals, right? Jacob loves to whistle. I wonder where he got that from. I don't know. Ange used to call me the whistler. But I've been teaching Isaac some guitar basics, and we're learning chords and notes and scales, and I'm showing him the connections between music and math, numbers, right? And there's frequencies and beats per measure and tone and tempo all related to numbers. Isn't that amazing? It says something about music and that power of music. That's the same principles that govern physics and chemistry are found in music. How about that? But the whole creation sings. We proclaim that, right? Music is powerful. It can change our emotions. It can be a potent reminder of a specific moment or a season of our lives or a person we love. It transcends time and cultures. It brings us together. And here in this place, our worship music gathers us centers us, focuses us as we tell the story and it proclaims God's love and strength and glory and peace and protection and power to us. Music can do that. And I mean, music, of course, is just about part of every sporting event, every political rally, every protest march. It has the power to settle us down or rile us up Funerals and weddings, birthday parties and graduations just would not be the same without music. It unites our minds and our bodies and connects us with others around us. So awesome was it to have singers here singing for us this morning in our special music. So thank you, Living Hope Singers. And I'm sure you caught it in the refrain, but that was called the reason why we sing. 
because of what God has done for us. We proclaim God's glory to the world, yes? Man. Well, some of the earliest worship music used the text of the Psalms, what we know as the Psalms, and people gathered to become the early Christian church in the ancient world, in homes, and they sang together. In places of worship, they sang music. They sang hymns. And uh, earlier in this, this chapter of the book of Acts, we hear that Paul was invited into the home of a wealthy woman named Lydia in Macedonia. Spent some time there preaching and sharing the good news. Probably was not something that young Saul of Tarsus might have ever imagined himself doing. We heard that story of his conversion on the road to Damascus just last week. He had been changed deeply. So they were going around and Paul and Silas were attracting a crowd maybe and they were being followed by a young woman, a slave girl. She's not wealthy, not like Lydia. She has no name in the story even, no agency. And her owners profited from her prophetic gifts. It's interesting that typically slaves were not considered trustworthy or credible, but she must have been good at this service she provided. But we remember back in the gospel where Peter is correctly accused of being a follower of Jesus by another slave girl. And Peter denies it. That slave girl was telling the truth too. And maybe that's what was annoying Paul, that she had it right. She was attracting maybe a little too much attention for him. And he doesn't want people to hear it from her because they, maybe they won't believe on the chance they will not believe her. He, he tries to get rid of her. So without the woman's consent or request, he casts the spirit of prophecy out, ends her career as a prophet. What will she do now, I wonder? What, how will she survive? We don't know. <coughs> but her owners were not thrilled. See, they were profiting. They were making money, right? And they found out they could no longer rely on this slave for income. They had Paul and Silas severely beaten and locked up. And Paul and Silas responded to this persecution by praying and singing hymns through the night. No one got annoyed with them. No one tried to perform an exorcism there in the prison. The other prisoners, were told, were listening. Even in the midst of their physical pain, having been severely beaten, these two were singing. They were praying. And their voices were heard by God. I wonder about that as our world is changing so rapidly we might wonder if God hears us when we sing when we pray some of us I know live with debilitating chronic pain others continue to grieve the loss of a spouse some live with anxiety or depression or addiction we are praying with you we are singing for you on those days that you cannot sing for yourself Music can be healing in that way, especially as we gather as the church and we walk hand in hand together. We are gathered together and singing and praying for one another. See it in hospitals and rehab units. Music therapists show up to soothe pain, to soothe patients and families and bring a relaxed environment. And it was enslaved people, we remember, that sang these Christian hymns and began what we know as gospel music. Powerful, powerful music even as they were forced to perform backbreaking labor in fields. So maybe it's not surprising that Paul and Silas were singing in prison. Maybe they were trying to heal their wounds or encountering, or encountering others in need of encouragement and peace. So that's what we do. We sing and we pray for one another. Maybe they didn't know what else to do but pray and sing. But there in that prison cell, as they were singing and praying, and the walls began to shake, the ground moved and voices grew louder as the earth seemed to vibrate with the power of the spirit between Paul and Silas and all those other prisoners too. They must have been singing along. The earth quaked. And it was so violent that the doors of the prison flung wide open. The doors were flung wide open, and I don't think that ever happened at a, a Justin Bieber concert, but um, <laughs> the, the chains even fell off their feet of those who were shackled. 
And there, like Daniel in the lion's den, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Paul and Silas knew the word of God was there with them. They were not alone. And they didn't move. They stayed put as the darkness covered them. They waited. And when the jailer came and saw what had happened, he drew his sword to nearly end his life for fear of the consequence of losing those prisoners that might have escaped during the earthquake. We know desperate people do desperate things. Every day, it seems, I get to meet people in difficult and desperate situations. And every story is different. It might include homelessness or mental health episodes or drug addiction. They've been ones beat up, thrown out, left behind, imprisoned, separated from support systems. They're ones trying to figure out how to survive in this world that does not want them. Trying to find a little rest, a little peace, a little healing, a little freedom. Sometimes I get to pray with them and for them. Sometimes they pray for me. Always, when we get a chance to know each other and I get to share a little bit of my story, share a little bit of Jesus' story with them, there's a change. And I haven't witnessed any earthquakes, but maybe a little bit of peace between us makes all the difference. Maybe hearing that we are loved beyond measure without regard for our worst moments brings a little healing. Maybe it helps that day feel like it's not a total loss. Maybe knowing that we are forgiven, that we are welcomed into new life with Christ begins a process of liberation for hearts that have been locked away a long time. Picture it. Paul calls out to the jailer. Don't worry. Don't do it. We're still here. They didn't escape, but the prisoners were all accounted for. They had saved his life by staying put. And he noticed. He fell down trembling and asked, what must I do to be saved? He saw something in them. He heard something in them that he knew was for him, too. This person knew that the singing and the prayers had power, and these men he guarded were not common criminals, but men of God proclaiming good news. And he would be forever changed, too, but not just him, his entire household. All of them would be saved because of Paul and Silas's praying and singing, because of God showing up in the midst of a difficult situation. In our churches, we work hard to create environments where faith can be shared, where we can pass that good stuff on to little ones and older ones too, to friends and neighbors. And sometimes we get so frustrated with, with slow growth or we think we have to do it all the right way. And we might covet the gifted staff of one church or the musical gifts of another or the shiny building that others worship in. But I think what I hear in this story is that God can show up anywhere and change our lives. God can show up anywhere and change the world. To God, anywhere is a place for the word to work, for a spiritual awakening to occur. And wherever we speak the word, wherever we sing those hymns or just whistle that tune that is stuck in our head or share our faith or gather together in prayer, and serve one another. God is there. And maybe we don't feel the ground shaking, so we don't think it's working. But in little ways, and in big ways, it does. And no matter what, the, what we go through, what the world does to us to tear us apart, to tear us from community, or from family, or from relationships, we can know we have this God that draws near to us especially in our most difficult moments when we don't know the way out. In the prison cells and the hospital rooms and every private hell we create for ourselves. And that God will not rest until the ground is shaken and we are liberated from those private prisons. Hear that. You are so loved. You are so loved that God chose to recreate the world in Jesus Christ 
to live and die for you, to promise you grace and life now in his name and even beyond this existence with him. Jesus died and rose for you and for everyone who disagrees with you, for ones who have committed crimes, for those who have been cast aside or beaten up or who have struggled to find a job or a house or food. God sees you. God hears you. Here's your cries. Here's your prayers. Here's your singing and your praise too. God hears us when we sing. And God knows what we need and hears the prayers of our hearts. This is good news, amen? amen. This good news breaks chains. It shakes the earth, this preaching and praying and praising God. It shakes the entire earth. For those who feel restrained, for those who have been beaten up, this gospel must be proclaimed. Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Our liberation is in Christ alone. And the powerful fall down trembling. We are all servants of the Most High God and proclaim freedom to all in captivity. This is the reason why we sing, to gather in all who are lost and suffering so that they can hear these notes of good news, that those ones who have no home, who are in fear, who still struggle every single day can know that they may come and know this all-encompassing love and grace of God to hear it and feel it and see it and smell it and taste it, that they would know the one who cares for creation like a mother, the mothering God who fights for her children fiercely, who gives us new birth, a living hope and abundant life is in this place. Share it, shout it, sing it, make a joyful noise. It's the reason why we sing. Amen. Amen. So let's stand, let's sing our hymn of the day, O Word of God Incarnate, that Word made flesh. O Word of God Incarnate, O Wisdom from
the faith that has been given to us by the apostles. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <coughs> Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. God of grace, hear us as we sing to you. Give us unfailing trust that you are with us and sustain us in all our difficulties as we share the good news of Jesus. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Free this world from the pain of violence and war. Speak your truth to those who lead nations that they would find diplomatic solutions to problems and end our reliance on weapons of destruction. Bring protection and healing to all affected by war, especially in Ukraine and Russia. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Feed your people at the table of creation. Prepare a safe place for those whose environments are dangerous or unhealthy, especially those experiencing homelessness. Refresh our earth, especially here in our desert home, and bring water for the Colorado River and Lake Mead. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Warm the hearts of all who celebrate and all who mourn on Mother's Day. Accompany those yearning to be mothers and those who have lost their mothers. Bring comfort to mothers who have lost their children. Help us all to heal from strained family relationships and open us to receive your nurturing love from all who serve mothering roles in our lives. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Seek out those who weep while they await healing or consolation, especially the family of Shelley Palestis, Vinny, Han, Bruce, Joan, Lois's nephew, Chris, Linda, Sarah's nephew, Logan, Maria, Stephen, Morris, Tammy's sister Terry, Allison and Quinn, Kay, Tony, Eldon, Ellen, Kelly, Bob and Debbie, Peggy and Wendell, Pete. Set people in their path who can provide the care they need and wipe away every tear from their eyes. God in your mercy, hear our prayer. Inspire the words of prophets and saints who employ innovative imagery to stretch our understanding, as, the, as did Julian of Norwich, whom we commemorate today. Send Christ to instruct us with motherly care. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Enfold us in the great multitude of saints from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages. Wash us in your saving grace every day, guiding us to your waters of life. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. 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 The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let's share a sign of that peace with one another. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace be with you. Peace, everybody. Peace. We continue with the offering of our tithes and of our lives. Thank you for your support of mission and ministry in the heart of the city.
Please rise as you're able. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care. And prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and he gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and poured it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Holy God, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Come, taste, and see. God is good. God is with us. God is for you.
Now the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you now and into eternal life. Amen. Amen. forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We are uh, off Bible study today. We'll be back next week, getting back into the Christ key. And uh, we've had such a great uh, discussion around hearing the promises of Jesus, the promises of the Messiah through the Old Testament in the Hebrew Bible. Come check it out. It's a lot of fun. Uh, thankful to Pastor Matt for leading us through that. And uh, we do have an important event coming up Monday night, uh, besides my wife's graduation. This is happening at St. Anne Church. It's just down the street, if you don't know it. And um, St. Anne Catholic Church, we're going to have Commissioner Tick Sagerbloom. We're going to have uh, City Councilwoman Olivia uh, Diaz there. And we're hoping that you can join us and come and hear these stories of people who are struggling with housing. And specifically so that those who we have elected to be leaders in this community can hear those stories too and see your presence in those places as they get ready to take some action uh, on these issues. Um, specifically, we're talking a lot about um, Airbnb type rental units and, and creating ordinances in the county and in the city for these things. So come check it out and be a part of this. This is how we listen to the stories of our neighbors and gather together and uh, it's pretty powerful stuff too. So we have VBS coming up. If you'd like to come and be a leader, we need more VBS leaders. We expect to have a, you know, 10, 20, 20, 30, 40, 100 kids here in the summer. I'm praying. Hear my prayer. And uh, come and see us uh, this summer. It's going to be hot, but we got, we got pools, we got air conditioner. We're going to have a lot of fun for VBS. So come and join us that special week at the end of July. And uh, I want to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. So the ones who are thinking of their mothers who are far away, the ones who want to be mothers or choose not to be mothers, but have been mothering to others in some way. This, let this day be for you. And we've got a special gift for you. We've got coffee and treats out in the courtyard. Come on out and join us, and uh, we'll head on our way after that, okay? Please rise as you're able for the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor, smile on you, and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Now we sing, Be Not Afraid. 